You're listening to Poetry to the Brim. Today, I'll be reading the poem The Layers by Stanley Kunitz. I believe it was written in 1978 as the final poem of his first collected volume, as a sort of summary poem for his first 50 years of writing poetry from 1928 to 1978. I'll be leaving a link in the show notes of Kunitz himself reading this poem, so be sure to check that out too. The Layers by Stanley Kunitz I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides from which I struggle not to stray. When I look behind as I am compelled to look before I can gather strength to proceed on my journey, I see the milestones dwindling toward the horizon and the slow fires trailing from the abandoned campsites over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Oh, I have made myself a tribe out of my true affections and my tribe is scattered. How shall the heart be reconciled to its feast of losses? In a rising wind, the manic dust of my friends, those who fell along the way, bitterly stings my face. Yet I turn, I turn, exalting somewhat, with my will intact to go wherever I need to go, and every stone on the road precious to me. In my darkest night, when the moon was covered and I roamed through wreckage, a nimbus-clouded voice directed me, live in the layers, not on the litter. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my book of transformations is already written. I am not done with my changes. So this poem is what is known as a dramatic monologue, a form of poetry that's composed of just one person's speech. In this poem, the speaker reconciles the losses of his life by recognizing them as just changes and layers of a life still in motion. Though there is an apparent solemnity in the poem, I think it's actually quite full of praise and hope. Praise for the lives the speaker has thus endured and hope for the lives he's yet to live. So the first thing I noticed in the poem was how far across the page the first line of the poem goes. I have walked through many lives, some of them my own. Some of them my own sticks out so much from the right-hand side of the poem that, to me, it demonstrates the speaker's feeling that his own experiences and losses are so weighty that they seem to throw him off balance, if you will. This is a great example of how the form of a poem can be suggestive of its content, or more precisely in this case, the tone of the content to come. Right off the bat, with just one line, the tone of the poem is set. And then right after that, in what follows in the rest of the first sentence, the questions the poem will address are stated. Quote, And I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides, from which I struggle not to stray. Unquote. Now, what is the principle of being that abides in the speaker? It seems that he's referring to what the nimbus-clouded voice utters near the end of the poem. Live in the layers, not on the litter. So what does this mean? In my opinion, the injunction is actually more clearly understood if we first understand why it's being made. Why must we live in the layers, not on the litter? The speaker has undergone many losses in his life such as the friends who have fell along the way. And to this circumstance, the voice seems to be saying that the losses in life are more than simply losses. They are more than simply the sense of lack or the litter they apparently feel like. 
there's a sense in which we can only fully understand a relationship to people, things, abilities, and so on, when it's buttressed by the experience of not having it. This is true of most things. The value of something is made apparent by its opposite. For instance, if we were blind and then we could see and then we were blind again, would we not have a deeper relationship and thus understanding of sight? It seems to be a common feature of human life that we can only fully make sense of and appreciate things once they've gone, once they've become like abandoned campsites. By the way, I love the image in those lines, the abandoned campsites over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Despite the heaviness of their wings, the speaker's scavenger angels are searching for what's precious and of value in those past experiences, in those now abandoned spaces. So our losses are more than the reckless abandon and sense of lack they leave inside us. We must come out into abundance and joy again in order for us to consummate the loss and sorrow, to reach a state of praise for what seems lost, and to reach the next layer of our being, so to speak. And thus the next chapter in our book of transformations will unfold. This is super interesting. The conception of the future as something already written and the self as an inner unfolding. This reminds me of what Rilke said once. In the eighth of his 10 letters to the young poet and cadet officer who once asked him about writing poetry, Rilke said, quote, the future enters into us to transmute itself into us long before it takes place, unquote. While the future is conventionally viewed as something that happens to us from the outside, Rilke suggests a very different conception of time, and thus changes perceived through time. One where the next chapter in our book of transformations is already written, but we must simply grow into an awareness of it and discover what it has to say. In the letter, Rilke goes on to say, quote, the quieter, more patient, and more open we are as sorrowful persons, so much more deeply and steadily does the new progress in us. So much better do we appropriate it. So much more will it be our destiny. And when at a later day it happens, that is when it steps out from us to others, we will feel that our innermost selves are akin and near to it, and this is necessary." Unquote. In other words, patience and attention are deeply necessary, and the quieter we are with our sorrows and fears, the more our future can enter into us and change us into what seems to be our fate, and the more we will be able to, quote, live in the layers, Unquote. as Kunit says. So I'll close by going out on a bit of a limb here. This might be reading too much into the poem, but I want to give it a shot. We are the unqualified awareness before experience. We are that which is aware of experience and all the apparent layers of our subjectivity moving across time that has shared those experiences with others. In what I believe is true, this is the principle of being beneath the apparent principle of being in the poem, from which the speaker struggles not to stray, although he lacks the art to decipher it. This is what is beneath the invocation to live in the layers, not on the litter. We must dance in the abundant theater of experience, not grasping among the dust and dreams of what will always and most surely be lost. The Layers by Stanley Kunitz I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, 
though some principle of being abides from which I struggle not to stray. When I look behind as I am compelled to look before I can gather strength to proceed on my journey, I see the milestones dwindling toward the horizon and the slow fires trailing from the abandoned campsites over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Oh, I have made myself a tribe out of my true affections, and my tribe is scattered. How shall the heart be reconciled to its feast of losses? In a rising wind, the manic dust of my friends, those who fell along the way, bitterly stings my face. Yet I turn, I turn, exalting somewhat, with my will intact to go wherever I need to go, and every stone on the road precious to me. In my darkest night, when the moon was covered and I roamed through wreckage, a nimbus-clouded voice directed me, live in the layers, not on the litter. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my book of transformations is already written. I am not done with my changes. Thanks for listening to Poetry to the Brim. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend or two who might also enjoy it. If you read the poem differently and would like to share your thoughts with me or just have general suggestions about the show, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to message me on Twitter or Instagram at A-C-Y-A-N-L-I-G-H-T or email the show at poetry to the brim at gmail.com. Also, you can find a full transcript of the episode on the website at podcast.poetrytothebrim.com. There you can also subscribe to stay up to date by email for when I release a new episode, as well as find ways to support the show. All right. Thanks again. Until next time. <laughs>